So if you've been wondering how you can take your local AI demo and turn it into an actual proper AI application with a proper backend, then this video is for you. I'm going to walk you through my fast API tutorial where I will show you how we implement these AI backends for all of the client projects that we work on at Data Lumina. In this tutorial, I'm going to specifically focus on the very basics that you need to understand in order to build AI backends. So there is really a lot that you can do with fast API. If you, if you, for example, want to build out an entire web application, there's a lot more that you need to know. But actually, when you're building AI backends, it's actually quite simple. And FastAPI is currently really becoming the go-to library to build API endpoints with for AI applications. So it's very worthwhile learning about this library. So I am going to explain essentially how we can do the following. So by the end of this video, you'll understand how you essentially can connect from any type of application or, or webhook or whatever to an API endpoint layer that we are going to create where we can then validate that incoming data and then, for example, process it using AI logic or send it to an LLM. So that's also the flow of operations when you are working with an API and when you're working with the backend like this. So really the goal of setting up this API endpoint is to serve as an integration layer so that you can turn your local demo where you run locally on your laptop, you run some examples, you can now actually expose that logic and make it available in an application so that other users can actually start to use it. That's the goal of integrating an API. All right, so that with that out of the way, what I want to do right now is I want to first go through this quick start with you and you can follow along if you want. That's what I recommend if you really want to learn this. And then we'll cover the four files that are uh, that are in here. And they're very simple. This is a basic setup. This is really all you need to know. And now in this video, I am assuming you are already familiar with the basic API concepts. So I won't go into all of the specific concepts about what is an endpoint, get post request. So we can keep this tutorial lean and effective. So if you're entirely new and have never worked with an API, it might make sense to do a little bit of digging, for example, with ChatGPT to ask, okay, what is an API? How does it work? And where does it fit into an entire architecture? of an application. So let's do that. We have the repository, then we did already the UC, UV sync. And now I can come in here and I'm going to copy paste this command over here. I'll explain what it does in a bit, but for now, I'm just going to CD into the app. Let's see, we're in here. All right, so we can come in here and run UVcorn main app reload. So this is now going to spin up our server and this should be running on localhost port 8000 right now. We can now access our API by, for example, going to localhost port 8000 and then going to the docs. And this is one super nice feature of fast API because by just defining your API endpoint, you get documentation like this. And now you might be wondering, okay, what's going on? This is cool. It seems to be working. We have some documentation, but that's the quick start. And I want to start there first so that we can now start to understand all of the different building blocks that we're working with right now and how all of this works. So let's come back to the tutorial over here. So first of all, let's understand what we're doing with this command over here and then look into the files. So whenever we spin up our uh, fast API application, we can use UVCorn, which is an ASGI server that actually runs the application. So fast API defines really your API structure. That's what we're going to do inside the Python files. But UVCorn is a server that handles the HTTP connections and really serves your application. So it really facilitates the communication between all of the different components here. And what we're doing over here, so we're using that UVCorn command, and then we say main. And main refers to the main file that we have in here. And the app refers to the variable app that we're creating over here. So we're uh, importing the fast API library and uh, we're initiating that using the app variable. So that's what we're seeing over here. And the dash dash reload simply means that as we go about changing and adding our files over here, that this automatically reloads. So if you're following along, congratulations, you have now set up your first fast API endpoint. So now let's dig a little bit deeper. So really with the idea of starting with the end in mind, showing you end to end of what we're going to do, now let's drill down and see how all of these components work together. And I have split the application up into uh, three parts. So we have main, router, and endpoint. And I did that on purpose to 
emulate essentially how we are using this in our production applications. So already out of the box, if you follow this tutorial, you'll get a boilerplate that you can reuse because in a lot of tutorials, you just find they have one big file and they add everything there just for the sake of simplicity. But I'm going to show you how we can make this more modular. So out of the box, this already is something that you can actually put into a project. So let's start with the main.py. So that's really the entry point over here. And as you can see, there's not much going on over here. That's also really what I love about Fast API. It's just super simple, it's super lightweight, and there's really not that much that you need to actually understand about the library if you're building lightweight uh, AI endpoints like this. So like I've mentioned, we import the Fast API library, and all we're doing right now is we're including a router. So you can see from router, we import the process router. And that is simply the next file that we're going to go to. So what this essentially allows us to do, so we keep our main we keep our main.py very lean and minimal. So there's not much going on over here. And essentially from here, we route, we essentially create routers so that we can move the data to the right uh, API endpoints. So now let's get into that file. So that's the router. So routes incoming requests to the appropriate endpoint handlers. So let's have a look at what that looks like. So come in here, you can see that now from fast API, we import an API router and we, we initiate that router over here. And then we essentially include that router and you see one more import over here that we're importing from the endpoint. So what this essentially does is now we can say, we want to create an endpoint forward slash events so that we have our application running in this case on local host, host 8000. But when you put this into production, this is going to be a URL and then port 8000. And we're going to mention forward slash events. So that's going to be the URL that then our application needs to send information to. I'll show that in a bit on how that actually, on what that actually looks like and how that can come together. But just know that we're creating a router as a way to say, okay, everything that's in this endpoint, we use the prefix forward slash events. And we can also give it some text, but uh, the prefix is really the most important one. So then we get to the endpoint.py. So this defines the data model and the endpoint logic for the processing event. This is really the only part right now where we implement some custom logic. This right now is all pretty much boilerplate. And here we can play a little bit with, let's see, let me close this down a little bit. Here we can actually start to implement our logic. So now if we go over here and we have a look at the files or the code that is uh, that lives within this file, we can see it's also very lean. And we start by initiating the router again. This is all just to follow the, the same syntax that we can use to essentially say, okay, we want to have this event endpoint that we're creating over here and we want to tie it to the router. Now over here, you can see that we have a Pydentic model. So here is that Pydentic integration is coming in. So out of the box, if you install Fast API, Pydentic will be installed as well. And here I have defined an event schema. So let's say you're building an AI application and the incoming data looks something like this, where you have an event ID, you have an event type, and you have some data in here, which could be a dictionary. So let's say you're integrating with an email service or with your Gmail and you set up a webhook. So every time you get an email that is now sent to, or that is the information that we want to send to this API endpoint. So and then the first thing that you want to do is figure out what that schema looks like and implement it into a Pydentic base model. Now, again, for the sake of simplicity, we're just using this schema over here, but I'm just explaining how this would actually, what this would actually look like in the real world. So you would first figure out your data source, implement the Pydentic base model, and then go from there. And now if we then go to the actual endpoint, so now we get to the actual Python logic, Python function, where we can decide with our application about how we want to process this data. So we have a simple function called handle event and we plug some data in there and we make sure that we set that, uh, we set the data type to the event schema that we have just specified. So in a bit, we'll see how that works, but because of this, we can now validate the incoming data. Whereas if the, the incoming data does not mass match this schema, our endpoint will give us an error. For the sake of demonstration, I'm just going to print this data 
But this logic that you apply over here, this should be the starting point of your AI logic. So if you're, for example, already working on an AI demo, you might have a simple processing pipeline or workflow where you make multiple LLM calls, you implement some guardrails, you do rag, whatever. It doesn't really matter. All of your logic that you already implemented, this is the entry point for you to then kick that off. So you most likely want to wrap that into some kind of workflow or class or function where you have a single entry point where data is coming in and you can send it to your application and now the whole thing starts to work and then simply what we do is we return a response so we import that response from from starlet and that is another uh, library that's working in the back end when using fast api and now we essentially give an http status code of accepted so if if all goes well this will return a 200 or 202 message status and then it will essentially ask the content it will say we have the data received so that's pretty much all you need to know right now about how you set up endpoints you initiate the app you create a routing point so that now we have forward slash events and then we have the endpoint in here and now everything that's in here essentially all the uh, events or sorry all the endpoints they they will live with the prefix forward slash events so that if now we use this forward slash here this can be accessed by simply using the forward slash events and so now we tag the endpoint with decorator over here and this is just following the fast api syntax so this now becomes an endpoint so i have another file in here which is the request.py so what this is doing is this is using the uh, request library to send an an event to send some data to our endpoint. So for this to work, you need to make sure that your application is running. So in the terminal below here, this should be running. And now what we can do, I'm going to run through this in the interactive window so we can really do this step by step. First of all, the URL is we're running this on localhost port 8000. And we just covered that our endpoint is available at forward slash events. So we have that as our URL. Now we are going to create an event data and this should match the Pydentic model that we have specified though. I will show in a bit what happens if we don't do that. If we right now come in here and we have our event data so we can have a look at that, this is all nice and neat in the correct format. And we add some headers to this. What we can now do is we can now use the request library to do a post request. We have the URL, which we have over here, and then we have our JSON data, which we dump. So this is a Python dictionary and we dump that to JSON and we include the headers and we can now send the response. So we can also see right now below here in the terminal that we print our data that is coming in. And that's because in the endpoint, we simply do a print, st print statement. Now, if we then come back to our response over here, we can see, okay, we get a 202 status code, the data is received and we get some additional metadata to see what's going on behind the scenes. So we have now created a simple setup where, let me scroll up, we can now, if this is available, if this endpoint is available, we can now send data to this fast API endpoint. It will validate the data and we can then send it over to our AI or LLM service to process that. So it's really about creating a communication layer that we need. And now, of course, the API layer is just one component of your entire AI infrastructure and system that you need in order to really build production-ready AI applications. And if you want to learn how we do that at Data Lumina for all of the client projects that we work on, you might want to check out our Gen AI Launchpad, the first link in the description. You can get access to our entire production framework that's available in a private GitHub repository. And also, you'll get access to all of the training tutorials that we have for this to really show you how you can set it up from A to C and start shipping real production-ready AI applications. Let me show you one more time what happens if, for example, this is not a dictionary, but this is a string. So now we do it like this. Now we get a status code 422 because this is an unprocessable entity. Because if we look in the endpoint, data is coming in, we set the data, we match it against the event schema, but the event schema is not matching right now because this is uh, a string instead of a dictionary. So now we can also start to catch that error and maybe also to the application or to, to the user to instruct what they need to adjust. So for example, here you can also see the input should be a valid dictionary. So that's out of the box, such a nice feature of Fast API that it comes integrated with Pydentic. And as you know, if you've been building with uh, language models, you know, one of the core 
methods to make LLM applications more reliable is to work with structured output. And most of the structured output approaches that you'll find within the Python ecosystem are all based around Pydentic. And that's why we really love working with Fast API because it just follows that same methodology. And if you go back to the documentation, you can also find how you can create uh, synchronous versus asynchronous endpoints in Fast API. And it is super simple. So in the current example that we have over here, this is a synchronous endpoint, but we can also make that async simply by turning the endpoint into an asynchronous functions and then essentially waiting, awaiting the processing logic. So this is super helpful uh, or super simple as well with fast API. And this will already make your application more scalable. All right. And then what if you want to protect your API endpoint, which you should do if you're going to put this into production? Here is an exercise for you to go through how you on how you can set up security using a bearer token. So I have an example over here, how you can set it up and how you can also work with fast API and with the imports in here create a security token or an API token, and then how you can uh, send an authenticated request. So that's going to be an exercise for you to implement on your own to not only better understand the code that we have over here, but also to understand at a deeper level, like, okay, how do all of these components work together? You can test some things, change some things, and then also implement the security components so that now you fully understand how to use Fast API to start really serve as the starting point for your AI backends. All right, and then that's it for this video. So if you found it helpful, please leave a like and also consider subscribing. And then since you're into building AI systems because you watched this video, you might wanna check out this video next where I cover my entire strategy to build effective AI agents in pure Python without relying on any other external frameworks. So go check that out right now.